Hello and welcome back to the workshop. I know what you're thinking. This is an unusual gear video. Why are we in the workshop? Well, I'd like to review this. Now this is the passerelle bridge. This is an accessory that is supposed to turn your guitar into that of resembling a koto. The premise is, is you put it on the 16th fret, tune up your guitar so that you can play both sides much like the Japanese koto would be played. But the more that I was looking at it, and I had been planning on doing this for a while, I just can't justify the price for what this is. It is a really interesting concept, and it very much intrigued me the many times that I had seen it, but I did not consider that this item would cost $80. $80 for a piece of brass. So the more I got thinking about it, the more I decided why not make it myself? Now, the design is pretty simplistic. It is just a curve that matches the curve of your fretboard and another curve that's a little more radical with a spacing that is a little wider than the fretboard. Now, I was not able to find any dimensions on any website. I did find a couple of copies that were 3D print designs, but unfortunately, I don't have 3D printing software, so I couldn't check the measurements for those ones. So I'm going to do it on the fly. Now judging by the picture, the dimensions are a couple inches off the fretboard where it hangs and obviously added with the width of the fretboard. And looking at it, I'm imagining that it sits about an inch, inch and a half off the fretboard. So. Going based off of those things, I came up with this design. Now you can pause the video if you want to take those dimensions and try and make this yourself as well. You'll notice I made a couple of notable changes. I match the radius of my fretboard. In this case, I'm doing a 15 degree radius, but you'll notice that there's a notch in it. A couple of the design concepts that I was looking at was that I wanted more surface area for resonance. Why this bridge just sat directly on the fretboard and just overhung the rest of it, I didn't understand. So what I did was I took the height of my fretboard and just took it down by a millimeter so that it would rest on the body and the fretboard. Now with this, I'm going to be using my Washburn WD-21 and you'll notice it's a cutout. So the surface area on the one side is not going to be contacted on this one, but looking at my other acoustics, it'll sit just fine on those ones. So I went with a 15 degree radius because it was in between and would work for most acoustics. So I have a notch out so it's sitting on the fretboard and the body to resonate through. And instead of the brass, I am going to be making it out of granadillo. Now I know what some of you will say. I have looked through many posts about this bridge where people talk about the design concept and asking about making it out of wood. And there's a lot of people that are very against making it out of wood for the purpose that most nuts aren't made out of that. A lot of bridges are made out of wood. If you take a violin bridge, that is a soft wood. You take uh, banjo bridges, that is a soft wood with a hard wood on top of it. So I decided to just go with a hardwood. That way I can cut the nut slots and it'll do basically the same thing. And considering that there are bases out there that use ebony nuts, I don't see this being a problem. So I'm going to get to cutting this. I, I won't film too much of that. So we can just get right into the review and see if it's worth $80. And with that, let's cut this baby out and then we'll try it out. And we're back with the finished cutout. You can see a few notable differences between this one and the Khaki King one is that I added some padding so that it doesn't mar up my finish and I tapered down the nut area where the strings are gonna go. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple coats of shellac on this and then once that dries we'll come back and we'll give it a test. Alright, now we got it all set up. 
and a couple coats of shellac on here and we're good to go. This took me all of a few hours counting the dry time of the shellac. It hasn't fully cured but I think with all the surfaces that it's going to be touching it'll be fine for a demo. So all that's left is to put it on and get it all strung up. I've already pre-loosened the strings so like I said just goes under the 16th fret and then basically you can kind of just mess around with the tunings as you see fit and we'll get it all tuned up. One thing I love about this is how expressive it is with bending the string. Although I find that it works much better with the higher strings than the lower strings. It takes quite a bit more force to bend them that way. Well, that's it for the short little demo on it. Now, what are my thoughts on this thing? It's a lot of fun to play around with. It adds a whole new aspect to the acoustic guitar, and I love the sound of a Japanese koto myself. Um, the tuning is nothing specific. I just played around until something sounded good. My big hang up with this thing is it is a pain to set up. You have to toy around with it back and forth until you can get the intonation close. Uh, much like you would with a bridge when you're intonating it, you have to move forward and backward. The only problem is that you're now worrying about two sides. Because of that, you are toying around with one side and the other side at the same time while trying to shift it and get it as close as possible. Now, is it worth the $80 for that brass one? Maybe. I may rework this in the future to try and make it better, but ultimately, will I purchase one? No. I would sooner probably recreate this one before I would buy one. I would like to play around with it more possibly on different frets to see what kind of different sounds I get. But I do love the concept and it's a lot of fun. My only downside with it and why I don't think the price tag is worth it is that because it takes so long to set up, you have to untune the strings, retune the strings, make sure it's on, make sure it's placed correctly. You almost have to leave it on an acoustic to make it worthwhile. So it's not something like a capo where you can just throw it on and be good to go. So, if you were in a performance aspect, which I'm sure Khaki King does, where she has one set up with it already, I just don't see it being worthwhile unless you've got it constantly set up that way. All in all, it took me a few hours to put together, and that includes the drying time with the shellac. So, it's a quick and simple afternoon project if you're looking for something to do. I'll put a link in the description below 
for Khaki King's version of this if you're interested in looking into it. If you are not, I have already flashed on the screen what my dimensions were that I used for it. Let me know if there's another unusual or strange product you'd like me to check out. I'd love to look into it. You could follow me in my social medias down below on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'd recommend my Instagram. I flood that one with my custom work and there is a lot on there to be seen. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. See you later.